I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to provoke our thoughts. Uh, we at Kubites, we are using story, the African story, to change our narrative of how the last hundred years we've built our societies in business, in everything. So I'm not here to pitch Kubites to you. I'm here for us to have a conversation because we think that we need to have a serious and a very hard conversation. Uh, in the next 50 years, how do we want Africa to be? How do we want to structure Africa? Uh, we build our economy in the last 100 years around other people's economy. Uh, it is said that the next economic boom is Africa. Africa is the youngest age or youngest continent in, in the world. Everybody's coming to Africa. Everybody comes to Africa to make money. Everybody comes to Africa. Everybody's strategy from the East, from the Americas, from the Asians, everybody's coming to Africa. What's your plan? What's our plan? Are we also going to China to also make money? But why is we are just allowing everybody to come here? Um, the future, of course, it's not about competition again. It's about collaboration. So we think that at could be text. It's, it, it's time for us to provoke ourselves in channel a new conversation, a new paradigm for us to see how we can harness the most powerful potential we have in our young people. Um, the greatest asset we have in Africa is our young people. Smart, agile, innovative, creative. The only thing we lack is access. Those who have do not understand how the world works to open up, to give these young people access to innovate. We don't need, like somebody said, we don't need to import all the tech from outside. Young people in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya are building massive stuff. But do we have the access like the Silicon Valley guys have? You have the access like Kalani um, um, World have in, in London or in China. It's the access. So I'm not here to tell you, oh, come and do this in Kubites. Yes, we are open for collaboration. We, are, we think that we are, we are a movement. We are building the next economic movement in Africa. We think if Silicon Valley can create a set of billionaires. The economy of Silicon Valley is bigger than Africa. That's the truth. If you take 10 companies in Silicon Valley, their net value is bigger than our GDP as of today in Africa. It was not built from the sky. It's technology that they used. Can't we begin to do these things? So for us, it's a very passionate appeal. Everywhere we go, we don't try to just say to you, oh, could we test this day, could we test this that. We think that we need to begin to talk serious things. So the kind of presentation I wanted to make I've changed it, and I've, I'll, I'll just start there and I wrote this thing. I've changed it because I'm not, I don't think, looking at how the whole architecture, looking at the people here, industry players, but the key people, because society is built around government. That's how society is built. So if I do not see the real players who, who actually influence policies, regulations, then it seems that there's something lacking. No matter what we do here, it will get to their, their table and they will push it aside. So for me, I change it now and let's all look into this thing. So Africa as a continent keep late on almost every disruptive technologies, every now and then. You see most African countries investing in so much into areas that will have little or no relevance in lives of humanity in the next 10 years. That's what we are doing today. In the last 10 years, Major players across the globe are all discussing new futuristic technology in areas of transportation, health, housing, education, manufacturing, agriculture, engineering, and legal. In relation to artificial intelligence, big data, IoT, blockchain, 5G, etc., sum up to mean Internet 3.0 or the fourth industrial revolution. It is not as though we don't have a society that is connected to the global trend. It is just a matter of us pretending to be blind to reality and later on turn out to be cons consumers. From the, the first industrial revolution to the third, Africa as a continent never played any significant role apart from being mere consumers. Internet started. People say, oh, internet was says, says, um, the devil is coming to take the world. Today, those who said internet was says, 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 they are using internet to preach. So the mindset for us is, is very, very important. The graph, uh, there's a graph that you, you see. So this is how innovation starts. The innovators are actually little, small. So in 2003, a young man 
in his Harvard dormitory, started something called Facebook. I remember my first year in the university, the first lecturer in, I mean, business management said, ah, how many of you have Facebook accounts? Some of us raised our hands and said, these are, these are the bad boys. <laughs> in Ghana here, just 2006, but this is, it's an innovation that a young man called Zuckerberg created just 17 years ago. Today, Facebook net wealth is 100 times bigger than Ghana. We are all using it. I mean, the man, I mean, the cybersecurity man asks us, we are on social media. We use, you saw it as, oh, fraudulent, but it's the biggest industry today in the world. So the innovators, Mark Zuckerberg and his colleagues, they are just few. The people who actually make money from innovations are actually the early adopters. So I'll use the uh, case of Facebook. In 2003, he created Facebook. The first person to believe in him was called Peter Thiel. And I will urge every one of you, please go watch the paper mafia. The guys who created paper, they are all multi-billionaires in different areas. So Peter Thiel left, he invested in Facebook he, with just $500,000. He had 10%. Four years down the line, Bill Gates wanted to buy Facebook. He said, no, Mark Zuckerberg is a smart guy. He said, no, I won't say to you. He had to invest $240 million. He had 1.6%, just four years span. So Bill Gates is considered to be early adopter, but Peter T is early, early, um, early, I mean, early adopter, early majority, late majority, and Africa, we always play where the laggard. <laughs> so we have another um, one is here. From the days where internet was invented, so email technology, you don't even have any African brand. We are using either Google, Yahoo, blah, blah, all those things. E-commerce, Amazon 1995. People said, oh, Amazon, how can you buy something on the internet and it can be shipped to you? People thought it was imaginary. Today, Amazon is the most richest company in the world. We all consume from their platform. Social media, like mobile phone. In those days, 19, somewhere in 1997, I'm a Ghanaian, so sorry. I'm standing outside and talking. You see somebody with a cassava. We thought it was a joke. Today, we all know, we all are infected. Either you have two mobile phones or three. If you don't have three mobile phones, you have three SIMs. So you can MTM, all those things. And these guys are milking us. It's part of us. You cannot do away with it. But the point is that had the country as, a, as Ghana invested in mobile money or in MTN, for example, and today we know the wealth of MTN, all in Ghana, and it's not an African company. Let's forget that it came from Saudi. It's not an African company. The major shareholders are, are Arabs. And the money is coming from Africa to them. So I'm provoking you. They don't look at technology as, 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 as something that we are not go going to be there. You are going to consume it. So why don't you take a position as an early adopter? Believe in invest in early in innovation. That's how you make money. And that's how you build society. Um, for social media, that one is... So show me one single African tech company in this space. That is worth a billion dollar. Just one. We are consuming Facebook, Instagram, WeChat, all those things. It's, it's a billion dollar company, um, industry. So now check this. If you put together Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, their net value is almost bigger than Africa. Show me one office of Facebook in Ghana. But when you went, you go to somebody, say, oh, we have this app, we can do this. He asks you, where's your office? Where is your office? Amazon, do they have office in Ghana? <laughs> and they are billion dollar companies. They are billion dollar companies. So virtualization, they, I mean, that's how you are going. But we want to see office, where's your office? Before you believe. <laughs> why should this be, this between Africa has about, why should this be? when Africa has about 65% of the wealth of this world, yet we call ourselves poor continent. The wealth of this world, 65% of the wealth of this world is from Africa, yet Africa every day, BBC, CNN, poverty, poverty, and we accept this with, 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 with joy. I mean, what's wrong with us? So, we will laugh, but I'm here to provoke you. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to provoke you because we need to provoke ourselves. These are hard talk we need to do. In 1990, China was almost a poor country. It was a decision of a state that let's do something about this poverty. In 30 years, China has been able to move over 700 million people out of poverty. They didn't do it through prayer. 
they did it with innovation and technology. I always say I'm a Christian, but I think religion is practiced strongly in Africa. Religion is the cause of poverty in Africa. So until we all begin to do these things and look at it very holistically, you will pray 24-7, poverty will increase every year, year on year on, because it's, stop, it's solving that thing. Today we are here again with an amazing technology called blockchain, which to me is for Africa. For a single reason, to do things better in areas of finance, governance, private sector, etc. Unfortunately, from almost all African regulators, have a defiant position, a very strong kakabinsem position, and they don't even want to listen. The fact is this, you can't regulate what you don't know. You can never regulate what you don't know. The only way you can regulate is to understand it. How do you understand it? Allow players to come out with the solutions. Then out of the solution, you formulate policies. That's what China do. They don't come out with regulation. They, they solve the problem. They create it. People start using it. And you, out of the usage, you see the loopholes. But you want to regulate. You are waiting to get all the, all the literature after it's over 10 years old before you start it. Now, what's, this is what is going to happen. Blockchain is coming to IMF, World Bank, they will bring it as a solution and sell to government. And they will pay millions of dollars. When blockchain is the only technology of all the first industrial, second, third, blockchain is the only technology that do not have anybody as a patent. Nobody owns it. So no Oyibo man, no American, Chinese will say, we own it. Anybody anywhere can use the blockchain. As a matter of fact, Africans even know more about blockchain than Americans. That's the truth. But what are we doing about it? So, in simple terms, could we test? I'm done, says, don't worry. <laughs> Today, a consortium led by Facebook with a massive corporate corporations have waded into this. It has become a major headline. Do you think Facebook, if blockchain is nothing, they will, they will waste time to come bring together major companies like MasterCard, Uber, Spotify, all those guys that, hey, let's do this. And the headquarters in Switzerland. Do you know what Switzerland is doing? Switzerland is a, a blockchain country. You can read about Switzerland, what they are doing about blockchain, using data currency in their economy. Now, Switzerland is where African people steal our money and go and hide it. Now, you hide our money there, Switzerland give our money back to IMF. And the IMF come back to Africa and give us this money as a loan. So, why don't we redistribute this wealth? We are, everybody's corrupt. That's the truth. I'm not saying corruption is... Americans are corrupt. Chinese are corrupt. Europeans are corrupt. They, they don't tell you this. But they use CNN to tell Africans are corrupt. Because why? Your corruption is... Excuse my language. I'm a very, very frank, frank person. Because until we do this to ourselves, and begin to tell these things, we steal our money and send it to Switzerland. And the Switzerland people give it to IMF. They come back and give it to us. Do Americans steal money and bring it to Africa? Do you think they are not corrupt? They are also corrupt. I'm saying, even if you are stealing I mean, people money, give it to people, read it to people. Let them create wealth within the society. Through innovation. I'm not advancing corruption, but I'm saying that America cannot tell me that they are not corrupt. Who, who are the companies? So it doesn't make sense for us to continue to do the things we have done the last 100 years. The same rat race. Let's begin to change things and create wealth. I'll give you two examples. There's a company called Flutterwave. Let me start even with Andela. Andela started in 2015 in a coffee shop in New York. New York. He met a white guy. And the white guy was saying that he was looking for a sales engineer. But in New York, he can't find one. And Aboyaji said, don't worry, I can train for you. He said, if you can do it, I'll find you. Go and do it, I'll find you. The guy founded I mean, Andela. Today, Andela is producing tech genius to Silicon Valley com I mean, companies. Why? Indians, we know, are the biggest IT suppliers in terms of intellectual. They are becoming too expensive. So the next target is Africa. Through Andela, they are exporting our young people. Why? Because no African is ready to, to, to invest in technology. Today, Flutterwave, in just four years, MasterCard has invested over $100 million. Today, 
Flutter Wave is doing amazing things. They, they are bigger than most of bank in, in, in Ghana. It started by a young man in Africa, Nigeria. We can do it. We have the power to do it. All we need is that give us access. Believe in your own people. Stop this stereotype. Oh, everything should come from a white man. It's not true. We are also smart. We are also knowledgeable. We are capable. We are saying that we can collaborate with the white guys. But we cannot continue to consume from them. Let all them come here and invest in our young people. Collaborate with us. Instead of sitting back and consume always. This is our message to you. You can visit our website. What we are doing is beyond digital currency, sir. What we are doing, we are trying to eliminate the dollar in Africa by using the blockchain to do cross-border remittances with cheaper fee, affordable to anybody. You can even use USSD. You don't need a, smart car, a smartphone. That's the technology we have built by Africans for Africa to the world. Thank you. Thank you.